Did you run out of video storage? I did. Stick around and I'll show you a magic solution. Hi, and welcome to Filmmaking and Stuff. I'm Chris. This is uh, the second part of a video series about squeezing all the performance out of my current hardware and my current hard drives. If you haven't seen the first part, please do so up in the corner. I'll put a link there. So, uh, in front of me I've got all of the parts uh, that I'm going to assemble today. Uh, last part I was talking about this Fantech case and uh, why I like it and why I purchased it. And here on the table is uh, four drives that I'm going to use. I'm going to use even more uh, for additional, but they are actually in use in the current NAS. And a power supply, a graphics card. This is a fairly good one, but I think it's broken. I don't really know. Try to see if it works. Otherwise, I'll need to swap around a bit. Uh, a, mother a motherboard with a processor, CPU cooler, memory. So it's a complete package. I don't have to assemble anything. This is from a, an old computer that I know is working. It's an Intel i5, I believe. Over here is the brackets. And here is sort of the, um, the magic. Uh, I hope this is going to work. This is a controller card for controlling. Oh, there's lots of SATA cables. Remove those. And in this box is a tiny card. It looks like this. I'll show it to the other camera. So what this is, is a um, controller card for hard disk drives. Because if we look at the current motherboard here, it's... Um, well, they got four drives and the two additional down here. It's got four drives here and two there. So I can have six drives on this motherboard, but that's not enough because I need eight and I want to have more expand expandability. So this is an uh, expansion card for this. I bought it on Amazon uh, and there are reviews on it that claims it to work with Unraid. I don't know if it does, but that's Part of the process, learning, see if it works. So, that's the components. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got two tiny USB thumb drives. Super tiny, I'll show you. Super tiny. Uh, and they're not very high capacity because I have read on the Unraid site that you, if you have two big USB memories, you'll encounter some problems. So these are uh, 16 gigs, I believe but I purchased them very small because this motherboard does not have a USB that I can put inside. There's not a USB um, port on the motherboard, so I need to use the external ones and I'm, I don't want them to break off. And I bought two of them because I want to have the software Unraid duplicated. So if one USB key fails, I have a backup. So that's the components, hard disk, power supply, motherboard, memory, graphics cards, that's a bit so-so. This um, PCI card, expansion card, and some brackets, and the uh, Fantex case. Well, let's start assembling. Now I've done some cleaning. The peel. Yay. So, off with you. Oh, there's a... There's another peel. Yay. And another one. Yay. So, oh, it's an accessory box. And what's in it? Yeah, there's a user manual. And there's some bolts. And what's this? Bracket holder. Maybe for SSDs, I don't know. Uh, yet another... Yeah, I think it's for SSDs you can... Or other hard drives. And some uh, zip ties and stuff. Let's not make a rookie mistake. Let's put in the IO shield first. Many newer motherboards don't even have these loose IO shields. They're actually in the motherboard itself. But this is an old one, so 
and this is very simple because everything is already assembled since it's an old computer. I don't need to put in the CPU or anything. It's just line it up with the uh, holes. <clears throat> this is a fairly interesting screwdriver. It's got sort of holders so I can hold the screw without dropping it. So I can just screw it down like this. It takes a bit longer to use this clamp thingy, but I won't dra drop the screw. So that's, that's on the positive, positive side. Like so. Next one. This is nothing particular. You've probably seen people building computers before, so. This is nothing extraordinary. That's all the motherboard screws. So now the motherboard is in place. Let's put in the expansion card. Where did it go? Yeah, here it is. In you go, and then we screw down as well. Nice and tight. So now I've got lots of expansion ports. How about putting in the power supply? I don't know how to put in the CPU because I need to remove the CPU shroud and I didn't know how to do it. So I had to look it up in the manual. A bit embarrassing actually, but oh well. And for this, I need to remove these thumb screws that are so well tightened that I'm not going to use my thumb. Trust the screwdriver instead. Finally, the power supply shroud is off. These um, thumb screws are not for thumbs, not mine anyway, because they are very, very hard to unloosen. Oh well. So, in you go. I put the fan down because there's a nice fan filter here. Now the power supply is in. I'm going to route these cables through the cable routing holes up to the motherboard. So let's start routing, especially the cable for the motherboard. This one. In through that one. I think we need to go through this one. There, there it is. Inside, great. <coughs> At least the first one, the 24 pin one. And now we need the, yeah, now it's in. The extra power for the CPU is in it. It can be a bit tricky. If you're really smart, you round this cable before you put in the motherboard, but well, it's in place now. Well, so far we almost have a computer because I mean, there's a CPU, the motherboard, the memory, expansion slot and power. The only thing that's missing is an operating system. And there's a hand I'm going to plug into one of these USB ports on the side here, and then we can actually run it. But we wouldn't have any hard drives to, to store anything in. So, um, and also we need to put in the uh, front IO in order to make the uh, power button do anything, because right now, it wouldn't turn on if you turn on the power button because it's not connected. So let's do that. To be honest, I can't see it. It's so dark here, even though I got the video light. So now the front USB and USB 3 and the power switch and reset switch and audio switch and HD LED light is connected. So now if we push the power button, if we put on some power, we should probably see something. Maybe that's a good idea. So we don't continue to build on a computer that won't boot anyway. Let's try that. Any picture? Oh yeah, green screen. So something's, something's wrong, probably. Oh well. I think that's, yeah, no, perfect. Great. 
yeah, so it works. Um, there's probably something wrong with the graphics card, but I did know that, so uh, it doesn't matter, actually. So it has got no boot device, and that's fine. I'm going to put in this uh, USB, the thumb drive for uh, Unraid, and see if it works. It's time to test. I'll push the button. Let's see what happens. I see the fan is turning. Well, we get the green screen. So this is not a green screen <laughs> screen, but uh, as I told you, there's something wrong with the graphics card. Uh, but I think there will be some form of output anyway. Well, yeah, there it is. Yeah, the Unraid, so the uh, Installation of the USB drive has been good, and it's going to boot now. But nothing interesting is going to happen, because I haven't turned um, on the uh, hard disks. So, let's mount the, the hard drives. The mounting of the hard drives is very simple and toolless. You just open these pins on the sides, put the hard drive in where it's supposed to go, like so, and then you close the pins, like so, and slide it into the in place, like so. These carriages has also some rubber padding, so they will help a little bit with vibration. Now I've installed my four 3 terabyte drives into the chassis. However, I need to put at least one of the uh, bigger drives from the NAS that's actually working. So I need to jank one out to put in here in order to have that biggest drive as my parity drive. But I'm going to hook these up with uh, power and uh, data cables. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned that these cables are too short, so I don't know if they are, I'll just put them in. Otherwise I need to order or use longer ones. Now I'm using the ones that came with the uh, expansion card, but I have other ones as well. I think it's nice, they're all red, so I like red. I was right, <laughs> the cables are a bit short, but no worries, I can move the PCI extension card from here to down here and then I'll fit them and I'll also need to get some there so I'll do that so now the four drives are connected to the expansion card but they lack power so I'm going to hook up some power and here we got power supply yeah this is modular but this has got only one of those that'll be fine I'll just put it through oh this is going to be a tight fit yeah it fits So, now the uh, drives are connected with both power and data cables. And as we saw before, I tested that the system is actually working. It's booting with the Unraid USB operating system. However, there's no fans working here, so I need to figure out how to use this uh, built-in fan controller to get the big main fan uh, at the front here to working as well as the case fans in the rear. So uh, I'll need to figure that out. The second thing I need to go uh, to do is to get the, uh, I think it's the eight terabyte drive from the NAS and put it in here so that I get my, I can use that as my parity drive. Because if I use that as my parity drive, I can start building the Unraid array uh, and then, when I, and then I can copy the data from the NAS here without 
losing data from the NAS. And then when I have all the data here, I can transfer these, the three additional drives to this machine and then put them into the RAID array. And then I'll have all my storage that I need, or at least for a while. So now I've tested most of the things with this new server, it's working, but I only have four drives. So now I'm going to do something that's not recommended. I'm going to yank out two of my drives from my NAS. Uh, why I say this is not recommended, because you might potentially break it. My NAS has a RAID setting of one plus zero. That means that every disk is mirrored. So in theory, I can yank out two disks and the striping is still intact. It worked. I yanked out two drives. They are here, two eight terabyte drives. They are still in the uh, NAS enclosure. So I'm going to remove it from the NAS enclosure and then put it in the server. And then I'm going to use one of them as a parity drive for eight terabytes. That means that the biggest drives I can have in my array is eight terabytes. That means one disk goes for parity, so I can't use that for data. This one will be data, so I have eight terabyte plus the four three terabyte drives. And that gives me a total of 14 terabytes, which means when this is up and running, I can easily copy all the data from my NAS to the new server. And when the copy is done, I can jank out the two additional drives, put them in this server, rebuild the array. Uh, no, I don't need to rebuild it, but sort of add the two new drives to the array and then I'm up, up and running. You're not supposed to jank out working in drives in an array, but I'm doing so confidently because I know that I have all the data back up online as well. But still, I do not recommend you doing this unless you really know what you're doing. And don't come here and complain about data. If you do do this, don't blame me. You've been warned. Okay, let's start to release these drives from its enclosure. This is not toolless. I need to screw out four screws. I didn't realize this, but there's a small tap here that's going there with the screw hole on the bottom of the drive. And the and three terabyte drives has it, and it makes it very easy to put them in and align them correctly. But the eight terabyte the drives doesn't have that tap, so therefore they won't sit flush, they actually they won't sit at all. So I think I'll mount them up on top instead. But I need to address this sooner or later because I can only fit three there. So I need to put one, at least one there. I know you're probably not supposed to do this, but I'm going to just snip it off in order to get it working. Like so. Hopefully it will align much better. That did the trick. So, all right, the first eight terabyte drive in place, like so. Um, now the two eight terabyte drives is finally in place after some modding of the uh, hard disk holders, snipping the, uh, the extra bit off. Now I need to put in some data cables and some um, power. So I have decided to put these two new 8 terabyte drives onto the motherboard uh, SATA controller and it's underneath the uh, graphics card. So I'm going to remove the, the graphics card because this type of server does not need a graphics card anyway. And since it's broken, it's just going to consume power and not do anything. So I'm going to remove it then I can easily access the ports underneath it, and then it's going to stay out of the computer. This will be a computer or server without a graphics card or without a display port or display output, I should say. So let's do it. It's important to push down on the release on the PCI holder. Otherwise you might damage the motherboard. I've actually done that. The, the, the motherboard didn't break, just the 
that particular slot. So I just moved everything down. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four of these, and I've got one, two, three, and another one for the, um, well, it's on the other side for the fan controller. So I've got just enough power to make this work. Uh, however, this is not going to be super easy. Or maybe it is. Yeah, so the two 8 terabyte drives has power, fan controller. I probably should mention that I have actually installed the fan controller without showing you. Um, so the uh, input for the fan control is going to the CPU fan header and then this the CPU fan goes here and then this controller controls the front front fan, the rear fan and the CPU fan. Maybe there's some software for it, but I doubt it will work on um, Unread because it's usually a proprietary thing or for Windows, usually. I haven't had a computer like this, so I don't really know. So we're basically done for now. All the six drives are being fed both power and data cables. Everything is running. The graphics card is away. So right now it's time to boot up this system and make the array. It's going to take quite a while because it's sort of writing and, and checking all the drives. So I think it's going to take several hours, somewhere about 10 hours perhaps. So that will be something that's going to happen during the night. I'm not going to close this up and make it very nice and tidy because I'm very soon going to get back to this using these two brackets to install the two additional 8TB drives that's going to get here fairly soon after the array initialization and the copying. And then I'm also going to try to add an additional SSD drive that I don't have because I just lost the last one that I had. So I need to go and buy an additional SSD and that's for the caching. Well, that's about it for the build and this video. In the next video, I'm going to move the additional two drives here after copying all the data to the current drives. And I'm also going to jump into the operating system of Unraid and all of those kinds of things. If you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.